Welcome to Alphabet City. I'm your guide, Aya Zaktar, and you are the merry audience. Andre Dereneshev, the director of product for Stadia, held a Reddit AMA. Let's talk about the most interesting bits from that. First up, he said, to be clear, Stadia Pro is not Netflix for games, like some people have mentioned. A closer comparison would be like Xbox Live Gold or PlayStation Plus. The Pro subscribers get 4K slash HDR streaming, 5.1 sound, exclusive discounts, and access to some free games. Roughly one free game per month, give or take. He also added there will be no free games on Stadia Base. That's the free version of Stadia. Regarding how Stadia will look, Dereneshev says that we'll see the UI in November at launch. He says, you have to trust me, it's looking good. Speaking of the launch, he says that when Stadia is available, all basic functionality will be active. That means you'll be able to play games across screens. You won't have to wait for downloads or patches when you want to play a game. However, not every feature announced will be available on day one. The Stadia controller will not support Bluetooth audio at launch. That suggests that the feature may come later, but that was not explicitly mentioned. NVIDIA Shield fans get depressed. When asked if Stadia will run on Shield TV, the response was as follows. My dream is to play Stadia on every device out there. At launch, we're starting with the devices we know best to make sure the experience is great. Hence, Chrome, Chromecast, and Pixel. Once we harden the tech and it's ready to scale, we'll expand to more devices, starting with the most popular ones. What happens if the Stadia service gets discontinued by Google? Here was that response. The games you buy on Stadia are yours to play. From day one, we'll support takeout, so you can download your game metadata, including saves, if you want to. He also says Google is, quote, super committed to Stadia. Someone asked if Google is doing anything to combat data caps. There will be tools in the Stadia app to manage your data and adapt to your situation. Dereneshev also says he's seen ISPs adapt in the past when he was at YouTube. What about family plans? There should be family sharing next year, but not at launch. During the AMA, it was mentioned that game prices will be competitive with other platforms. It would be smart if Google offered a bunch of games at a steep discount or bundles to get people on board at launch. Google has a history of killing off products, so it's hard to invest in a game at full price when the service could disappear. When I saw a demo of Stadia working at Google I.O., a game was being played on what the PR person said was the cheapest PC they could find at Best Buy. The game looked great, by the way. Then again, there's a lot of unknown factors, like how fast was the connection and how will gameplay change when there are thousands of people playing at the same time. I really like the idea of being able to play the same game on my TV, laptop, or phone. I'm really curious about how Stadia will work in the real world. I pre-ordered the Stadia Founders Edition so we can share our opinions once it launches. I don't know if I'd be interested in Stadia if I didn't work in tech, though. Let's go to Uptown Updates. A Google VP says that the company has terminated Project Dragonfly. Project Dragonfly was the code name for a censored search engine meant for China. How good is the Pixel 3a camera? It's almost identical to the Pixel 3. DxO Mark published a review of the 3a's camera and gave the 3a an overall score of 100. The Pixel 3 landed a score of 101. For photos, the 3A and 3 tied with a score of 103. The 3 scored 98 for video, but the 3A scored 95. Numbers, numbers, numbers. YouTube Music is getting a new function. There will be a toggle switch in the app that lets you switch between songs and music videos. So, if you wanted to use the YouTube Music app like a regular music app, you could do that. If you want to watch videos, you still can do that. On to Comment Cove. This is the part of the show where we shine a spotlight at the most amazing audience in the world. You. Last time we were talking about the upcoming Galaxy Note 10. Briand asks, lose the headphone jack, a hole in the middle of the screen, and no real upgrades? Why would anyone buy this phone? Now there was a reply. Unoriginal YouTube name said, S Pen, USB-C earbuds with noise canceling, faster charging speeds. Those are good reasons to upgrade. Nothing But Speed said, the Note is becoming more and more irrelevant each year, it seems. It used to be we got the latest chipset, the largest battery, and latest features even before the S series phones. Now, it's backwards, it seems, and the only reason to get the Note is the S Pen. That's a fair point. Thanks to everyone for writing in. If you've enjoyed your stay in Alphabet City, please like and subscribe. I'm Ayaz Akhtar, and I'll see you online.